On September 28th of 2019, hundreds of thousands of people eagerly watched and listened as Elon Musk gave his fourth annual presentation on SpaceX's mission to colonize the planet Mars. These events have encountered massive growth in support and popularity over the years, as new rocket engineering milestones were achieved and transparently shared by this young but successfully ambitious company. But this was to be expected, since the inception of SpaceX in 2002, Elon's first main objective for his rocket company was to inspire the masses to become pioneers of other worlds. Well, I just think that a future where humanity is a space faring civilization and out there exploring the stars is an incredibly exciting future. To do that seemed simple enough. All Elon thought he had to do was put a greenhouse on Mars using a Russian-made rocket. But he wasn't taken seriously by those he wished to purchase the rocket from. And so he taught himself rocket science and began defining much smaller goals that would hopefully one day eventually lead to his ultimate dream of colonizing Mars. We have lift off. SpaceX Falcon 1 launch vehicle. Falcon has cleared the tower. And now, almost two decades later, SpaceX is at the forefront of space technology innovation with their own fleet of reusable rockets and capsules, surpassing even those long-standing agencies that once ushered in the genesis of space exploration. But with each Mars presentation Elon gives, a new kind of rocket grows. In the years prior, this rocket was just a concept only seen on computer renderings, leaving the audience longing for an exciting feature that hadn't yet begun to take on a physical form. However, over the past several months, SpaceX checked off another achievement when they built and successfully flew their first Mars rocket prototype. And now, that momentum has escalated. SpaceX is just weeks away from launching its next test vehicle that will ultimately set the stage for the journey to Mars. If there has only been one kind of consistency associated with Elon's Mars rocket, it is consistent inconsistency. Since the very first mock-up of SpaceX's Mars transport vehicle, unyielding changes have plagued the design process. This is to give you a sense of size. It's quite big. But this is rocket science. These powerful vehicles are known for pushing the boundaries between new technology and future technology. And they also take a long time to build. So it's a common issue for parts of a rocket to become outdated before the vehicle is even complete, causing new and improved changes to be implemented into the design. SpaceX's development of a Mars rocket began with the design of a new engine. In 2012, the private company started to work on an engine that, when clustered with more of the same engines, could be powerful enough to lift and accelerate an extremely large launch vehicle out of Earth's gravity well and toward the Red Planet. They called this new breed of engine Raptor, a staged combustion methane-filled rocket engine. It would later become the first of its kind to take to the skies. But in its earlier days, SpaceX named their first large vehicle concept, the MCT, short for the Mars Colonial Transporter. And then in 2016, Musk decided that the new designs to his Mars Transporter allowed it to go even further than the Earth's neighboring planet. So at the 67th International Astronautical Congress Conference, Elon presented his first official design for a Mars rocket that, at 12 meters in diameter, was much larger than what he previously had in mind. And he called it the Interplanetary Transport System. The ITS was a carbon fiber two-stage super heavy lift rocket that stood at 122 meters tall and could place 550 tons in a low Earth orbit. It included a reusable booster that contained 42 sea-level Raptor engines that together produced 128 meganewtons of thrust, and a reusable second-stage interplanetary spaceship for passengers or the ITS tanker for in-orbit refueling, each containing six vacuum and three sea-level Raptor engines. And the goal is at least 100 passengers per ship, although I think Ultimately, we'll probably see that number grow to 200 or more. This is what a launch of the ITS would look like. The fully stacked rocket would use the 42 Raptors at the bottom of its booster to lift the second stage passenger or cargo vehicle into space, when it would then stage separate and return back to its launch mounts. A new second stage tanker full of fuel would be placed on top and launched into space as well. Again, the booster would separate and return to Earth, while the tanker would accelerate to make Earth's orbit and then rendezvous with the passenger or cargo vehicle that was launched first. The tanker would dock and refuel with the passenger ship before returning to Earth, and the passenger ship would make its way to Mars. Once safely on Mars, it would refuel using processed resources from the Martian surface and return to Earth. This strategy, while slightly modified, is still the projected method. The ITS was expected to send cargo to Mars by 2022 and humans two years later. But in 2017, at the 68th International Astronautical Congress Conference, 
Elon announced that SpaceX will not be building the 12 meter diameter rocket, but instead will build a still large and still carbon fiber, but smaller launch vehicle first. And although they hadn't yet found the right name for it, the code name was BFR, short for Big Falcon Rocket. This new 9 meter diameter launch vehicle stood at 118 meters tall, 4 meters shorter than its predecessor, and with 31 Raptor engines in its first stage, it was capable of producing 48 meganewtons of thrust and placing 150 tons into low Earth orbit. With the second stage now consisting of six Raptor engines in total, as well as a new Delta Wing. And so the Delta Wing at the back, which, will also, which also includes a split flap for uh, pitch uh, and roll control, uh, allows us to control the, the pitch angle uh, despite having a wide range of payloads in the nose and a wide range of atmospheric densities. At the outset of Elon's speech at the conference, he informed the viewers of his confidence in the new design and how the rocket will one day become the all-encompassing future of the SpaceX rocket fleet. Uh, we want to have one system, one, one, one booster and ship that replaces Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon. As a fully reusable rocket, the BFR would be cheaper to launch even though it could place more mass into orbit. This would render all other rockets wasteful and therefore obsolete. It's, it's really crazy that we build these sophisticated rockets and then crash them every time we fly. This is, this is mad. He also announced a solution to what is arguably the biggest problem facing BFR's construction, funding. If we can build a system that makes our own products redundant, then all of the resources, which are quite enormous, that are used for Falcon 9 Heavy and Dragon can be applied to one system. SpaceX could pay for the development of BFR through their existing and future customer launch contracts to place satellites into orbit, the revenue they receive from NASA to put cargo on the International Space Station, future lunar surface mission contracts, and of course, selling tickets to Mars. But there was one more money-making tactic Musk had up his sleeve, using BFR like a new and improved airline for point-to-point -point transportation around the globe. And Elon finished up his 2017 presentation still confident in his 2022 and 2024 Mars timeline and he left the audience with his vision of a future Mars colony. By early 2018, the initial development of the first BFR second stage was underway at a new SpaceX facility at the Port of Los Angeles. More than 40 employees at the site were dedicated to the construction of the spaceship, with up to 700 expected. And in August of 2018, the US military for the first time recognized the potential for such a rocket to transport equipment around the globe in less time and money than a C-5 aircraft. Just one month later, Elon's next Mars presentation took place at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, where it was shown that the designs for BFR had evolved past the Delta Wing and toward a tri-fin approach. This ship's new aft fins and forward canards behaved as control surfaces during final approach, much like how a skydiver uses his arms and legs to orient his body in freefall. Then upon landing, the three rear fins are used as legs. The upper stage ship now contains seven Raptor engines, and the first stage booster had the same engine model as before with 31 Raptor engines. The big announcement at the presentation was Project Dear Moon, the first planned private passenger circumnavigation around the moon in 2023, led by Japanese billionaire Yuzaku Meizawa, who donated an unspecified amount to SpaceX to fund a large portion of their development costs for BFR. I choose to go to the moon. <laughs> Meizawa purchased all the seats for his first lunar trip so he could bring artists with him on the journey. Still, Elon Musk shared another new method to further fund his Mars transport vehicle. We've got the uh, Starlink uh, global broadband system that uh, we're developing, uh, which will also be a, a key source of revenue. Although these Starlink satellites were in production at the time, only two early prototypes had been placed into orbit. But being that the initial test was a success, a handful of months later, SpaceX deployed their first 60 satellites into low Earth orbit. In November of 2018, Elon Musk tweeted the new official name for his BFR rocket, Starship and Super Heavy. Starship for the upper stage spaceship, Super Heavy for the booster. And then one month later, Musk announced the most significant change to the rocket's design yet, one that would rapidly speed up construction at an unprecedented rate in the months to come. SpaceX had decided to ditch the carbon composite material it had been using to construct the rocket at the port of LA, and instead switched over to using a stainless steel alloy. And on December 23rd, Musk made his fan base aware of the Starship prototype that was already quietly being built by a water tower company at their Boca Chica site in Texas. This test vehicle was eventually given the name Starhopper by the fan community, and it was designed to be a flying test bed for near-future Raptor engine in-flight tests. 
This would include one hop up to 20 meters and then again to 150 meters while performing controlled landings for both. In March of 2019, the Port of LA site was shut down and all future efforts to build Starship and Super Heavy were to take place at the Boca Chica, Texas site as well as Cocoa, Florida. These two separate teams began a friendly competition to see who could build the next bigger and better Starship prototype faster. These orbital vehicles became known as Mark 1 and Mark 2 respectively. A month later, SpaceX completed Starship's first static fire test with a single Raptor engine. On July 25th, Starhopper successfully completed the 20 meter hop test. And then in August, it hopped to 150 meters. With the completion of its final flight, Starhopper is being converted into a Raptor engine test stand. Around this same time, SpaceX began constructing the pieces for the Super Heavy booster. And on August 28th, Elon tweeted that the future generations of Starship and Super Heavy could become twice the size and diameter at 18 meters. Then just this past weekend, on Saturday, September 28, 2019, Elon Musk gave his most recent Starship presentation at SpaceX's Boca Chica shipyard. With his freshly built Starship standing behind him, and alongside SpaceX's very first rocket, the Falcon 1, Elon once again spoke to inspire the masses to rally behind his mission to Mars. Um, and becoming a, a space-faring civilization, being out there among the stars, this is one of the things that I know it makes, it makes me glad to be alive. I think it makes many people glad to be alive. It's one of the best things. But for the first time, there were only a couple subtle differences that separated his new Starship model from the previous one. The first noticeable difference was the move from three aft fins to two aft fins and larger forward fins. But this won't change the skydiving re-entry and landing strategy that was already in place. Another difference was the removal of one Raptor engine on the Starship vehicle and separate landing legs that now attach to the base of the rocket. The heat shield on the windward side of Starship is now made of reusable ceramic tiles instead of a methane transpiring surface. The Super Heavy booster went from 31 Raptor engines in 2018 to 37 Raptors in the present. Although Elon did say that they could use less on an as-needed basis, and unlike before, Super Heavy now has six legs that look like fins, but really aren't. There were several reasons why SpaceX made the switch from carbon composite to 301 stainless steel in 2018, the first being cost. It's $130,000 a ton for the carbon fiber and $2,500 a ton for the steel. So the steel is about 2% of the cost of the carbon fiber. Another reason was practicality. Steel is easier to work with and can be used for many things, even on Mars. And finally, when exposed to cryogenic temps from super cold liquid fuel, this type of stainless steel alloy doesn't get brittle, it gets stronger. Starship and Super Heavy will be used in the future to build and maintain a moon base, colonize Mars, and even venture out into the cosmos. The next small step toward the stars is quickly approaching for SpaceX. Starship Mark 1 will soon soar to 20 kilometers and back within the next month or two. Mark 3 will begin manufacturing in a month and will be completed in about three months. The body will consist of one continuous cylindrical steel hull instead of several plated rings stacked on top of each other. Starships Mark 4 and 5 will also be completed within six months. And in 2020, the first Starship Super Heavy will make orbit. Over the past seven years, SpaceX has been designing rocket parts so that one day humans may colonize Mars. That day is quickly approaching. Like those who lived through the space race of the 1960s, the current generations are now experiencing a new period of innovation and enthusiasm for space exploration. But this time we aim to go further than those who went before us. Through dedication and teamwork, big dreams are becoming big realities. And with each new achievement, more eyes that once looked to the stars for solace turn their gaze to Starship.